nation. Hebrew Kingdom Building. Praise Yahuwah for his presence. I told our rabbi for our in double honors, in infinite honors, infinite honors, double infinite honors to our chief Malek Musha in his absence. Infinite honors to our chief Malek Yahusha. Double honors to our Malka, Malka Kael in the house. Double honors to our Malka Yada. Double honors to our Hagabira, mother of the nation, Malaka. Double honors to our Rosh Jacane of the nation, Rosh Yithro. Double honors to our Rosh. Yahas, our Saba, Yoshiahu. Also, a special double honors to my my rib, the tooth thing, the favor that I found in Alua, in Mushala, Kana. To my children, I send shalom. To the hot gabira of the house, double honors to our gabira kava. Double honors to our gabira, ahaba shalom. Honors to our Moray Takar and to his Isha. Honors to you, Mora Para. Honors to Mora Debora. Honors to Mora Takaya. And honors to our Hadar Zamar. Shalom and love to everyone connected. I want to send a special double honors to the Mushals and the Mushalas of the five or four assemblies in the West. I love you. Appreciate you. So the Rabbi Yahuwah, I present unto you the eternal honors unto you. I submit this tongue, this voice, this these lips, this sound, as your frequency. Use this vessel as your fit glory in this earth. I yield myself to your total will. Let this message find us wherever we find ourselves today in you. Let it be a two-edged sword, swift and cut in a consuming fire that we bring forth an offering only you will find acceptable. So it's to you, our eternal Saba, who sits on the throne. And to you, Adoni, our Yahusha, our Hamashiach, our Malek Kabo. And unto your eternal excellency, I pray. Hallelujah. 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 So now, Rabbi. Shalom. Shabbat shalom. As you can see, the title says, A Soldier Fit to Die in Yahusha, the Army of Yahusha. And the uh, title verse is, Therefore, endure hardness as a Two soldier of Yahusha Hamashiach. So today we about to become boot camp. Hallelujah. 
And uh, anybody that served in the military, be free to give an expression and account of where we're going today. I was talking to you, who are, you know, y'all heard me saying this week about dying a lot. You heard me saying it within the last few weeks, you who have been dealing with about dying. And I was talking to Yirmiyahu today. Uh, what was it? Uh, Tuesday. And uh, we got to talking about that thing. And he was telling me about this guy that was a Navy SEAL. Saying how this guy pushed himself beyond his borders to the point where what, he was ready to die doing what he was called to do. That he said he was so competitive that, what did he say, him and somebody else can be on the treadmill at the same time? And before he let you beat him, he'll die on that treadmill first. Before he give up and let you be the last man stand, he'll have to die first. And I told him, I said, that's funny you say that. <sighs> I began to tell him that my dad, who was a, who was a 27-year Marine Corps veteran, And I, I used to talk, you know, me and my dad, as I got older, he, we would talk about some things about the military. And one day he puzzled me with something that I'll never forget. I said, he said, do you know what Marines are trained and built for? Anybody know? Because everybody else believes that, you know, from what we knew, I was like, well, y'all, y'all, y'all trained to be weapons of mass destruction because y'all killing machines. But people that got it in the back, he said, no. All that training and everything we endured is to prepare ourselves to die. Yeah. Strange, ain't it? How can you go to be a soldier because the acronym of a soldier is prepared to defend something, right? But in your mind, the conquering part is not to be defeated, not to die. <laughs> but the world tells you in all emphasis, live your best life. Live life to the fullest. <laughs> but you walk into a military base and they tell you, you coming to die. I want y'all to let that sink in. I'm going to go to this... Uh, I'm going to show you something very important. This is a Marine Corps boot camp that I saw a video. I, we'll get to it later. And on there at the beginning, that God tells them, they get on, they're getting off the bus. And see, as they approach, because see, here's what we don't know. The recruiter, when the recruiter comes to you, he comes prophetically. Those that have been in the military, you know where I'm going with this. They come prophetically. They tell you, you're going to be all that you can be. You're going to become a few men. You're going to become few of the few, the proud, the Marines. They tell you to be army strong. And they'll tell you you'll be a naval shipman. 
Tell you you'll be, you can be decorated serviceman or woman of honor. Man of pride. Man of distinction, woman of distinction. Somebody that your family can look to, be proud of. Have your college tuition paid for. Have health care benefits. But they don't tell you what you're going to walk into the first day you approach the base. Yahuwah, right. when he speaks to you, when he calls you his priest, his son or daughter, he don't tell you, he tells you you're his son, but he don't tell you what you're going to go through to get to that part. He don't tell you the the ones that are there to receive you and how they come on the while you're on the bus and all of a sudden these men come on the bus and they tell you you belong to them. They even go as far as to say, "Get off my bus. <laughs> Hurry up. Get off my bus. Get in line. Get to the yellow line." You better follow directions quickly. But some of us, we'll get a simple order and we feel like, why we got to do all that? But here, you don't even have time to decide whether you can, whether you can delegate, whether you can conceive. You just got to follow, listen, and obey. Let's play Week one, receiving. back his knee, break him down, and then put him into a real choke. Yes, Simple enough, right? Yes, sir. Woo.
Tens of thousands of Marines have begun our standing service to our country on the very footprints in which you stand today. You will carry on that proud tradition. Do you understand? Yes, sir. So, when the Mushals, when Malek Chief sends us out, we telling you, when Malka tells you, when your Moray tells you, when the Gabiras tell you, we say it's people that done laid this foundation for you. Their footsteps are still in the earth today. Abraham, Yitzhak, Jacob, that's, that's what he's telling them. Because they're standing on footsteps that were already there, that already made an impression before you got here. That means the kingdom is going to stand with or without you. He's telling them basically without saying, am I right about it, military? With or without you, the Marine Corps is going to stand. The Marine Corps success depends upon teamwork. Therefore, teamwork will be an essential part of your training here at Paris Island. The words I, me, or my will Pause no longer right be a part of your Pause vocabulary. Right Did y'all hear what he said? The terms I, me, my, done. Soon as you get off the bus, there's no individuality that exists. What are we saying? As soon as you walk, soon, I'm not even going to tell you as soon as you walk. Soon as you opened your Bible, you're done. What? Am I lying? We're going to get to a verse where you don't even get to choose because it was already chose for you. Morah sent out a thing about the, the oil press. I ain't get to, I ain't say it because I wanted to. I wanted to tell y'all, boot camp is the greatest illustration of the oil press. There are three stages. The first stage is to crush you. That's what they're doing when they get you off the bus. Crush your ego. Crush your individuality. Your friends and your parents, they don't exist anymore. Oh, yeah. Play it for me, Hadar. Toda. You use words such as this recruit, that recruit. So you can't recruits. say my dog, Do my yes, homie sir. no more. You got to say I. <laughs> it's a new language term. He said, you don't say, you don't say that. Now you say that cadet, that soldier over there, that enlisted partner, my war buddy, my comrade. Go ahead. Passing through these hatches symbolizes your transformation. Now, this is important. I need everybody to pay attention to this part. When they get to this door, I want you to listen to what he says. Do you <laughs> understand? Yes, sir. The Marine Corps success depends upon teamwork. Therefore, teamwork will be an essential part of your training here at Paris Island. The words I, me, or my will no longer be a part of your vocabulary. You will use words such as this recruit, that recruit, these recruits. Do you understand? Yes, yes sir. Passing through these hatches symbolizes your transformation from a civilian to a United States Marine. Did you, you hear what he just said? Stop that, Hadar. Did you hear what he just said? It's a portal to go into the U.S. military. So at that point, if you had any inkling to change your mind, it was there before you went through that door. Because once you walk in that door, you are responsible for everything that happens from that point. You are accountable. Am I right? Because that's one thing this life teaches you. 
Nobody want to take accountability for nothing. I was sitting there watching. I got to the point, my issue, I'll tell you, I got to the point I couldn't stop watching these boot camp videos. And you know what I came to the conclusion? I understand. Unlike a lot of countries, and military people correct me, but there are a lot of countries that require every citizen to serve at least one term in the military. Why do you think that is? Anybody? You can go back to the slide. Because, because um, they live in that territory and they you know, um, eat off the resources of that territory. Um, so if you're eating off the resources, you got to die for the resources, right? Two bands. Anybody else? Where the mic from? What we doing? See, that's part of order right there. You should have been ready. Well, I was going to, um, infinite, I mean, infinite honors to Malik and double honors to Malcolm and honors to all. Where it's due, um, double honors to Mushaw. I was going to say, um, when you become a citizen of a country, you become property of that country. Your whole existence and being is protected by them, and therefore, it's a demand that you give your life for that, that system, that kingdom, that so, democracy. So, soldier, are you saying that you and that land are one in the same? Con, yes, sir. Ain't that what your chief yeah. been telling y'all? <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, double honors, Musha, infinite honors to Malik. Um, double honors and honors, where it's due. Hey, every, um, hey okay, we'll say like this. <laughs> That's the double honors. We already know y'all got honors. Hallelujah. I'm like Chief. We ain't going to go through that. <laughs> this is the honors for everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go. Uh, I was going to say, so the outer courts is like the inner courts. And there's a will and inner will. There's a people within the people. And uh, that duplication can be set for. Yeah, you, you, so, you, 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 you gone. You gone. Come on back. Hallelujah. You already going there. Anybody else in the back? Military people, I'm going to be minimal in what I'm going to let y'all say. I already know what y'all going to have the right answer. Uh, so honest, it, <clears throat> it's interesting. I think Gadone said um, about you being resourced. You're actually, you call a GI, which means government issue. Ah. You, you belong to this, you, the government, mm. and you can even hurt yourself uh, negligently. Like, if you go on a beach and get sunburned, you can get fined for that because you hurt government equipment, government property. You are property of the U.S. government when you join that military. And, and also, you were talking about how they get rid of individuality. Before they physically break you down... Yeah, yeah, don't you go all the way in there, <laughs> you military man. You, I knew you, you can't do all that now. Before they physically break you down, they mentally break you down. Mm. You get rid of your pride. They, they, they call you all kinds of names. Maggot, roach, cockroach. Uh, they'll even look at your last and, name. And they, and they have toned it down. Yes, they had to. Why? Because of these. Uh, say, say it again, Gabir. Weak. Yep. If you're training, some, because I learned the reason why they all in your face yelling at you. Get your animal, get in order, get in order, do your blah, 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 blah. Because they're teaching you to know how to function even in the midst of chaos. Because ain't no bomb going to quiet down for you. Ain't no gunshot going to re-angle itself for you to get yourself together. You got to be ready when the mark says go. And the important reason why they tell you to do that, because you, you do a term because you become one with the nation of which you serve. You got to join yourself to the mission. They'll take your last name and make some other kind of word out of your last name to mock you just to see who's going to cry. You, you ain't even going by your first name no more. They strip you of your first name. You go by your rank and your last name. The rank is to symbolize who you belong to. They strip you. 
I ain't going all the way in the video. Go to the next slide. I ain't going all the way. Uh, we'll go back and look, watch it. But they come to a point where after they have you empty your personal things and put them in a bag for a concealed time, you can only have certain things on you. You can't even have a, a, a some, it has to be a religious thing. That's the only thing you can wear on your wrist. And that's after a certain amount of time because you got to become one with the uniform. That's why they, co they cut your hair, man, because you come in one with the uniform. Because the cutting of your hair is the stripping of everything you knew, that it drops right there in front of your face, though so you know you're no longer in Kansas anymore. They cut your hair because they want you to look like everybody else. Mike. Shalom. Um, it seemed like the enemy did it in a, um, a tainted way to strip us in this captivity to break us down so that we could become somewhat, without even knowing, an enemy of Yahuwah within. Because through all the captivity, we took on certain traits from traumas. So uh, it, seemed, it seemed the same way. It's effective the way the enemy uses that as well to join with him and put us in a strong delusion. How does he do that? By stripping us down? No. By telling you to live. Wow. I told you, they, the world tell you everything to do but to die. The only, the only one that tell you to die is the military in the world. But even in that, that's to conform to their kingdom. To fully initiate you into their system of understanding. Mike. When you uh, spoke earlier about the, the army, you know, be all that you can be, mm -hmm. they identify the environment in which you can excel. You know, just like they have their own terminology, he called it a hatch, uh -huh. not a door. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so they, they taught us to excel within the parameters that they set. Right. But then outside of that, in this, in Babylon, it's the same thing. They identify the territory, but it's away from Yahuwah. The further you get away from Yahuwah, the more successful they tell you you are. Hallelujah. So <coughs> what makes it, Amal Teshuvah, what makes it so hard for us to die versus us dying in the military? Mm -hmm. because we still retain the individuality and we are not, it's not intuitive for us to submit to something or someone. It's intuitive for us to be about ourselves. Hallelujah. Because that's what society taught you. They go to a point where they walk you after you separate your stuff and everybody goes to a phone. Look like a pay phone. They got a door and they got this letter up there and they tell you, read this script. Don't you say nothing but what's written up here. And it's you calling your family. They say you call until you get somebody to answer. And when they answer, you read that. You don't even, you don't even sit down and say, hello, how you doing? They say, no, nah, this is so-and-so. I'm calling to let you know I made it. I'm safe and I'll see you in a few weeks. They don't care about your girlfriend. They don't care about your mama. They don't care about your daddy. Because you have come to die. There's no, that's why he said when you get to that door, there's no more existence of you. Let me show you what death is in Yahuwah. Mim represents the water. It's Mavet. Strom's H4. 194 says, Mem represents water, carries the 
connotation of abundance. Whew. Also means to be mighty or very much, since water is seen as a vehicle of travel. Ain't that what we were singing today? Flow river, flow river, flow river. When we talking about a ship docking at the bay today, did I talk to any of y'all about this message? Y'all didn't catch that. It also can mean change of one's status. <laughs> and and Gabir, we ain't even yelling at them all. <laughs> we ain't sitting up there saying, boy, get up in here and pray like you're supposed to and speak in tongues like you want to. It's simply a suggestion. <laughs> Or so I say voluntarily. <laughs> you being voluntold to do this. And it's a chain of command. In case you didn't know. All right. The ua, the tent peg, used to firmly attach the tent to the ground, means to join together, secure something to something else. Letter of stability, since it's vital to the tents of foundation. This is death in Hebrew. <laughs> the ta, to mark, a sign, signature, covenant, is this making sense to y'all? Okay. It can also refer to writing or identification. Tell me what the military gives you once you are fully engrafted. What do they place to give you privileges on the base? A what? And also what? An ID card. Identification. So death means that when you die in Yahusha, according to what we read, that you're bringing the heavens, establish it in the earth, and you are the sign that it happened. Did y'all catch that? So that's what Shabbat is. Do y'all know why we can't get off of Genesis 1, the first verse? That's what Yahuwah did. He drew the waters, the vehicle, from the heavens to the earth. He said, let there be light. Ah, he was organizing and then put a man as the sign and the pinnacle that I have put this place under my subjection. That's death. Because <laughs> when you look at it, Mashiach, the one thing the enemy didn't want Mashiach to do, <laughs> when he went up on the mountain, he told him to do everything but what? Die. Because he knows the death of you is the ending of him. Because where you died, the Shamaim reigns. If you believe it. Go ahead. Chat got everybody talking today. Man, I was going to say, uh, this so pivotal, because you, you asked earlier when you were saying other countries have their citizens to enlist. And when I was sitting here, I was thinking about, like, why would they do that? And it came to my mind, as a leader or somebody who carries a load, you understand the inside of what it takes to keep something thriving right. or to keep something alive. Right. Sometimes when people are just on the outside or they just getting the benefits of a country standing, right. they don't consider that it's people out there dying 
is people losing their lives. And this is why America honors soldiers so much. And I think the reason why, I, I'm going to leave it right there. I'm going to yep, keep letting you be. You own it. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Um, I knew I was going to get y'all attention. It, it, I always, I used to quote this a lot, you know, in the movie Baby Boy. It's a scene where he talking to Jody and he talk about guns and butter, right? Mm -hmm. And the butter is the, the resources, the milk and honey, so to speak. But there is no butter without guns. And when you look at even our history and the scriptures, the reason why Egypt took us captive was because they said, they have multiplied among us, and they might partner with our enemies and take war against us. So when you even look at our uh, kinsmen who left this country in the 60s, the, the tribes in Demona, they wouldn't even make them citizens. But the first thing they did, or one of the things they did to make them even allowed to stay in the country was they had to join the military. So... It's kingdom. You fighting for a kingdom one way or another. You, but you get to choose which one you fight for. But the enemy is deceiving us into not knowing that we already submitted to his kingdom if we're not awakening Yahushua. Hallelujah. Because it's two forms of death. There's a death of kabod, and there's a death of destruction. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Notice how the moot and the mavet, they got the same meaning. Go to the next slide, though. This is death, too. This is to give up. To breathe out. That's it. You've given up. Go. Give a mic to me. Right. I want to make another point on that. When it comes to uh, when it comes to death, I notice being being there in the middle of it, there's a lot of people who are going to sign up. They'll sign a name on the dotted line. They'll swear in. You know, they'll meet the conformity standards and get their hair cut, and everybody goes and picks up their uniform, right? But now when it comes to getting your deployment papers and it's time to go for real, and you know that death is right around the corner, a lot of people go AWOL right then. That's why they come prophetically. That's why that, that recruiter come to you and tell you all the benefits. Build you up, get you ready and excited to do this thing. And then you get to boot camp and say, oh, man, I got to get from here to there without dying and I'm not talking about the dying of self I'm talking about without dying and giving up isn't it that's the boot camp is to produce the breaking point in you did y'all hear chief say this is stretching season it's boot camp you're all about to see what's your breaking point. Hallelujah. And it ain't for him to know. It's for you to understand it was you the whole time. Okay. Let's go there. Next slide. Ha. Huh. Because see, what they didn't show at the beginning, like I just bought out. Don't go. Go, Godot just bought out. Is there's a swearing in ceremony before you can even get on the bus? There's an oath that you got to take. That's a covenant you made between you and the United States military to uphold whatever they teach you. That you're going to go in, you're going to accept all the training. Accept all duties and honors given to you, and you won't miss a step until you or them say it's over. Go ahead. 
you know how powerful that is. So that that this is I'm glad you're bringing this out because even when Yahuwah came and got them from Egypt, he said he let them let out the army from Israel. I mean from Egypt. But what I'm a lot of times you will hear people in America. I'm just using this as an example. A lot of people go to the military, especially in my age group, because they want a car. I want the benefits. I want to get that insurance. I want to have a, some, 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 I want to be set when I get out. And they get up in there and they let them, the first thing, as soon as you, like you said, you get on the bus, you get off and you getting so much training, you ain't even think about that car no more. No. All you think about is surviving, Survival. living. And then I think it's even important to hear this and know how to apply this in your life because a lot of times the people, and I'm just using this, I've never been in the army, I've never been out on the battlefield, but I think the application of it or the essence of it is in a lot of stuff. The people, a lot of times you'll see who died as somebody in a the moment, they freeze up right. because they ain't following their training procedures. I can't say that for every situation, right. but that fear. Right. So they, they lose the 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 direction or the target of where what that trainer was trying to get in their head when they couldn't see what is they what are you pushing me to? Right. What are you pushing me so hard? Right. And they trying to show you you're gonna get put in a situation that's gonna feel like nothing but death around you, right. ready to grip you. Right. But you gotta know how to keep your eyes up on the target. So they like that that prophetic aspect that they come to you in. Like, hey, this is this is who you are, this is what you're gonna represent, this is what you're gonna be, this is what you're gonna get. They give that to you on the front end. Hoping and hopes that you gonna be one of the frontiers later to lead it. So where do you think they got their philosophy from? Where did they get that philosophy? No, let no man steal your crown. Cause once you get through boot camp, you ain't letting nobody put on your uniform that ain't never served. Oh, you want to get a veteran man? Go up there that like you serve and put on the uniform and pretend to have served. They'll rip that jacket off you and humiliate you in front of everybody. Why? Because I survived. I gave blood. I gave sweat. I gave tears. And I will not allow you to desecrate my. They get to the point where they say, my military, my army, my Marine Corps. Because what they don't tell you, before those drill sergeants, became drill sergeants, they were intake cadets too. And all of a sudden they find themselves 10 years later talking about my core. So y'all wonder why chief and them down on you and say, this is our covenant. And I won't let you pretend. I won't let you fake. I won't let you desecrate because this is an eternal excellency. I won't let you put on a uniform. If I find you not fit, you can't even come through the door. Numbers 30 and 2 says, if a man vow a vow unto Yahuwah. Or swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all the proceeds out of his mouth. So y'all took an oath. <laughs> See, the Chiefs recruited you from the online. <laughs> it looked good. Hebrew nation building. <laughs> Chief, Chief all up there talking about Middle Eastern Covenant. He, looked, he made that thing. I got to get to that teacher. I got to get, but he didn't tell me what it was going to take to hang with him, though. You saw him in the kitchen, and every now and then he put his pretty wife, Malka Kyle, with him. They talk about marriage. Oh, I want to get there. I got to get down. I'm ready to move. Ain't that what happened? 
Y'all went in that recruiting office. Y'all saw them dress blues and you saw that military get, you said, I, I got to, I'm going to swear myself in. And then when you got to that bus. Can you see it? Oh, y'all tricked me. I thought it was going to be fellowship. Us just getting together as bruised. You didn't tell me there was responsibility. Ooh, y'all don't like me today. Deuteronomy 7, y'all. Y'all know this. This is, this is Malek's chapter right here. But because Yahuwah loved you, and because he would guard the oath which he had sworn to unto your fathers, has Yahuwah brought you out with a mighty hand, redeemed you out of the house of the bomb. So he doubled down in Isaiah 63 when he said, you are mine. I gave nations for you. So when you put on that uniform, you can't go AWOL. Because we done gave up privileges and honor for you. We moved over recruits for your sake. So if you desert us, you will be dishonorably. No benefits, no VA loan. A disgrace. A sign that you couldn't keep pace with the order. A dishonorable discharge. Read that for me, y'all. But because Yahuwah loved you and because he would, he would guard the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, has Yahuwah brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house so of bondage? So didn't he get some of y'all out y'all ghetto? Didn't they get some of them people that came boot camp with y'all? Didn't they draw them out of jail situations? Didn't they take some of them out of the ghetto slums of inner America and showed them how to make a bed, showed you how to brush your teeth, showed you how to wash your hind parts? You owe me. Because without me, you didn't know none of this. You ain't even know how to make your bed properly. From the hand of Pharaoh, king of Mitzrayim, know therefore that Yahuwah Elohah he is Elohim, the faithful El, which guards his cov covenant and mercy with them that love him and guard his commandments to a thousand generations. What? To a thousand generations. What? To a thousand generations. So you don't have time to say, you hurt my feelings, drill sergeant. I'm going to tell you, man, you who has showed me one day with Ima Tashuba, boy. She, she reminded me of my dad. Because they don't see gray areas. It's black and white. Military black and white. Gabira like that. Roche like that. They don't, ain't no gray area. You either going to do it or you don't. I never forget that day. She said, no, nah, we just going to call it what it was. It, it wasn't no misunderstanding. It was rebellion. You did not follow the order. Ain't no misunderstanding. Is Yahuwah not playing with what he say here? So the military was like Yahuwah to them people. That's why they'll strip that uniform off you if it's worn improperly. Because that military saved their life. So how can they remember being bought out of a project, but you can't remember your life being in turmoil and bought out? Can't follow simple instruction. Yeah, it's hard. But we're going to break you. Go ahead. And repays him to his face. Oh, and repays them that hate them to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hates him. He will repay him to his face. You shall therefore guard the commandments and statutes and judgments which I command you this day to do them. Wherefore, it shall come to pass, if you hearken unto Yahuwah, these judgments 
and guard them and do them that Yahuwah Eloah shall guard unto you the covenant and the mercy which he swore unto your fathers. So military, that part is like you going court martial. He going to bring you before the council. <laughs> and everyone's going to delegate whether they see fit based off of what their insight says because they've been tried and shown and purposed to sit in that seat. So when you can't take correction from a leader, you're in trouble because they have already shown that they deserve the seat that they sit in. They ain't hear that. We ain't your friends all the time. Sometimes we have to go to commanding officer. And I got to deal with you as a leader, not as your homie, not as your friend, not as your arc. Because it's my job at the end of the day to get you right and fit to present yourself to Mamalek. This is, this is taking the breath out of people. Help, help me, uh, Gabir, if I need it. Because this seems to be taking the breath out of people. Go to the next slide, sir. Deuteronomy 29, verses 12 through 15. Go ahead with your theatrical voice. <laughs> that, you should, that you should enter into covenant with Yahuwah Alohaika. And into his and into his oath, which Yahuwah Elohiko cuts with you this day, that he may establish you today for a people unto himself, and that he may be unto you uh, uh, an allure, as he has said unto you. And See, right there. See what I'm talking about, military people. They're telling you when you take this oath, come in, come in, real lightly now, because. You got a dog tag now. I'm fully responsible for anything that happens to you from this point on. If you can get through boot camp. Go ahead. What you're saying is through, um, even at Ella, Ella, yeah. Ella, Ella, I can't say it right, Ella Haika. That ka, that's on the Ella like, Ella Ika. that means, that's the, the kaf. What it's saying is, you're bent to his will. It's, it's basically, he's saying you're, my, you're Elohim, but he's saying, I bent you to my will. You're bent down to his will. Even that word right there is showing you what is happening in this verse that you will be bent to his will. So that's Hallelujah. the purpose. Of, that's the, burp, the purpose of boot camp. To bring you fully conform to the will of your superior officers that are sent before you. But guess what? You got an even higher order. Because even though you see our Malex, there's one that you ain't seen yet that's telling you you got to conform to his order. You know why? Because he did it for you. Oh, you didn't know? His two footprints equal every footprint the military could show you that came before you. Yahushua came to die. So what do you think you came to do? Oh, it don't take all that. <laughs> Keep reading. And as he has sworn unto your fathers, to Abraham, to Yitzhak, and to Yaakov, neither with you only do I cut this covenant. Oh, what? 
Say that. Read that slow, because this is what Malek reads. Read that. He talk about this all the time. Anybody remember this? Is it clicking? Go ahead. Neither with you only do I cut this covenant. So they standing at Sinai, and he said, neither not with you only do I cut this covenant. Who he talking about then? So you just like that, that olive that don't know that you've already been summoned to be pressed and nobody asked you because the oath was taken before you even got here. Y'all didn't catch that. The olive don't get to choose when it's time for the pressing. And it don't get to tell you how it get pressed. Because you're still in the crushing stage. So that's the beginning where you done called home to mama. You done got introduced to your drill sergeant. Now you go to the phase of knowing your weapons, knowing the scholastic things, knowing the workmanship, what it takes to be a soldier. Go ahead. I know you know where I'm going. Go ahead. So th what they do, we, we don't memorize the oath of enlistment. We, we don't memorize that. We, we, we go to re-enlist and we can't, well, what did I say when I came in? But what you do learn from day one is your 11 general orders. What is that? You better memorize them. That's how you conduct yourself if something happens. I mean, it's, they put that in you. It's kind of the condensed form of the covenant. So that's the universal order of the covenant, right? Y'all don't know what y'all walked into. I told you, Chief got you. Chief, he had you sitting in that library. You didn't think he was going to ever move from there. Had his hat on. Shout out to the Gibberine. Hallelujah. Too, Bob. Running all them names. I love my Chief, man. That's, that's my, I love him. That's my hob right there, man. But see, for me, it was different because me and him talked about this the other day. I saw him online. But see, and most military people can relate to this. We've been a few places. We've seen a lot of things. I ain't going to take you just because I've seen you online. I got to come see you. And one meeting, we sat in that Jamaican restaurant for, for about four, five hours. And I said, I don't have a choice. Where you at, man? Come on, I, come on. I. He prophesied to me, but he didn't tell me what he was going to do to me. Mm -mm. He got me. I came to Deland, Florida. This is after we done met. I had no idea. When I got off that bus, Come here, Deke. Come on, help us do these immersions right quick. Right, right, right. What? Right. What? Yeah, you the olive. You don't get to choose when you get pressed. They kept telling me, hey, hey you're going to get some of this work. Nah, man, nah. I would get to the point where I would hang up the phone in mid-sentence. You know why? Because I knew that whatever they said, Yahuwah honored it. So before I let them get it out their statement, Chief, I tell you, yeah, you going to click? Uh, oh, my, I was just a call drive. <laughs> that old Chief Yahushua, hey, I, you gave him them pink slip, yeah, I, I didn't know. I took an oath with him that I forgot about by the time I met him. You heard what, you heard what Godot just said? Because when I cut on the first time I watched his video and watched another and watched another, I had made an oath that I forgot by the time I met him. You stuck, bro. Why? Because whenever two or three 
things are what? It's established. So if I didn't want it, I should have stopped after the first one. Yeah, it'll mess some of y'all up. Because y'all had no idea. You know, because our chief, man, that man, hey, man, he got the patience of the code of sheen. But when it's time to cut, that joker will cut you every which way but the filet mignon. There ain't no butter knife. Be a jinsu, a sword. But you didn't know that when you got cut, that was part of the oath. That's part of your boot camp. You're going to get broke. You might fail the PT test the first time. But they're so confident that by the time they get done with you, not only will you pass, but you will master it. That's, that's saying they taught duplication. What? That's why I couldn't stop watching it. Man, the voice of many waters. Read the next one. Neither with you only do I cut this covenant and this oath. But with him that stands here with you, with us this day before Yahuwah Eloheinu, and also with him that is not with, that is not here with us this day, Deuteronomy twenty nine twelve through fifteen. Read Matthew five and thirty three over there on the other side. Again, ye have heard that it was that it has been said by them of old time. Old times. It's Mashiach speaking. This ain't new information. But sometimes we act like we ain't never heard this before. This is why superior officers can get frustrated, agitated, because how many times has he sat there and talked this to you? Before you even got to Augusta, how many videos did y'all see uploaded on the site? Go to the next slide. Read that next verse. Sir. Luke 1, 68 through 73. Blessed be Yahuwah Elohim of Yasharal, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servants. So you should look at chiefing them different than you do your drill sergeants. Because he honored his word to the ancestors before you and raised up two that were bold enough to build a nation and dedicate it to Yahushua. Because you didn't know the name Yahuwah. You was in church with your sanctified self. Some of you didn't even go to church. You was on the block. You had block ministry. <laughs> so that's the same thing the military tell you. When I found you, you, you weren't fit for nothing. See, y'all don't want to give credit where credit due, though. You know what? I was talking to my wife today. You know what Yahuwah showed me about disobedience? He said, disobedience is a sign that you have no complete trust in the one that leads you. So the breaking is not just to break you, it's to form a bond of trust. Because before, I might have to go out on that battlefield with you, and I got to trust that you won't take a gun and shoot me when the enemy is on the other side. Because you petty. 
you mad because I said something you ain't like. So you'll take the opportunity to take me out. But we out here on a battlefield with a world ready to kill you. So I don't care about your feelings. Take it up with my king. Yeah. Them drill sergeants don't care about you crying. The old school one told you, you, you want your mama, you want your daddy, I'm your mama, I'm your daddy. <laughs> now drop down and give me 20. Now Chief got y'all dropping and giving them 20. But y'all think he being too hard on my child. Because what the military is training you is to become one. You ever watch them go sometimes and look, watch them do their marches where they got the uh, What's that thing they got hovering over there? You can film them. The drones. And watch how in t sound, it's like one man moving at one pace. You don't see nothing out of place. So what... What they're telling you when we come and tell you, you got to be one with us and bring it in the presence. You got to fall in line. Fall in the formation. But there are different calls to formation, right? Am I right, military? But get, go ahead. Okay, come on. So um, this so through, and that's why duplication is so important. That's why the word came to call forth a nation of prophets because that's what our Malik is the mantle that's on him, a, a prophecy. You feel what I'm saying? So when he encourage y'all and give y'all the mic and say prophesy, speak in your tongue, you falling in order. Even if you, you better have confidence. But even if you don't have confidence that I'm going to dive who I am when I get this mic, to become something else. I'm being crushed to produce the oil that I didn't prepare all week because all week you didn't have time to get kindling stored up so you can burn when you get here. So the correction is not for the sake of embarrassment. Mm -hmm. The correction comes to put you so you can see how far you got to go to get where you supposed to be. We got to be one. It ain't no two heads in the house. It ain't. Go ahead, Gabriel. Say what? He's the dr So this, this is how crazy what you're saying. Because even what, after what was brought out today prophetically, when he was talking to me about the ship docking the bay. As y'all begin to sing that, he said, I was the water, I was the boat, I was the wind, I was the whole thing wrapped up in one package. So if I can get everybody on their assignment, you can duplicate what you saw. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Uh. <laughs> I'm sorry. As he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, which he have been, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all them that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to the fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to the to our father. 
Abraham. So before the chiefs brought us into an oath and a covenant with them, they had to already know what it was to perform an oath and a covenant with Yahushua. So what am I saying? Even the drill instructors got to go to school to be trained to be a drill instructor. Do you know they make them act like they new recruits? They are tenured. Staff NCOs treat it like incoming cadets because you got to become the mind of the cadet that you're leading. You got to understand the pressure. You can't just come in barking and giving orders if you don't know what it is to be barked at, to be given orders to, to be broke down yourself. But they did it twice. Come on, man. Did y'all catch that? The drill instructor dies twice before he meets you again. Let me catch y'all here while I got y'all there. So worthy is the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the earth. Hallelujah. First death, second death, I come down as a man. Mm. Mm. Knowing your infirmity, so I know how to drive you. I know how to lead you. I know what you go through. I know the press. I know the stress. I know the influence that life have on you. I've been disrespected. I've been spit on. I've been lied on too. What's your problem? Hallelujah. No excuse. Basic training, boot camp, they do all the exercise, they break your mind down, they break everything down. You do the PT test. You fail the PT test. It's not to embarrass you because you failed. You, you failed to meet the standards. You have to do remedial training. You That's do remedial grace. Training. Ain't that grace? Yes. Because you didn't meet the standard. So he has right to kick you out of the military right there. But grace comes in and say, I'm going to help you. Matter of fact, I'm going to do something you didn't see. I'm going to go back 15 years of my life and die to the uh, drill sergeant that set the example for me. Then I'm going to come back and say I want to give a little bit more to the very army, that influence of that sergeant that saved my life, and I'm ready to die again so that I can save the next recruit that may not make it. I can encourage them that I failed it too, but I know how to get you back on course. See, y'all talking to somebody that knew how to fail. <laughs> I was an expert at making mistakes. But for a lot of you, like my own children, I made the mistake not knowing I made it for you. I want y'all to catch that. already died for you and then came back and died again because I had to die at that discipleship training school in 2003 y'all didn't know that I had to die there And thought that I had died fittingly and then went another 15 years to die again when I met Chief Malek Yahusha. Chief Malek Musha. Yeah. Columbia, what y'all remember when I asked y'all about y'all intercessor? Who remember? Yeah, figured that. How do we honor them or how do we serve to them? How do you do it? By respecting them and praying for them also. That's how I do it. And yeah, if you have to die. You also got to trust the ones that came before you. 
Because the one that died and came before you comes as Mashiach. That's your intercessor. What do you think Hamashiach is? Make an intercession. Because even in boot camp, your drill sergeant might have to be an intercessor because you might have made a mistake that they understood, but they know the right word to say to the right person to get you back in fold. Yeah, y'all don't understand this because that means order. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Mushaw, um, on that was uh, the honor, order, and submit submission is submitting to the orders to the one that you honor. Submitting to the one that you honor, following the orders. It shows who you are submitted to by you following the orders that have been put out by the one that you honor. Hallelujah. Go ahead, let Ima Teshuba and then you, Shimshon. Just wanted to add another thing about when you're going through the training and say you do fail, say you failed the PT test. They're not gonna let you fail by yourself. The whole platoon failed. We all failed, cause you failed. So what does the drill sergeant do? I want you to run with her and pace her. Cause she gonna pass. Or we all ain't gonna pass. If you don't run with her, then that means you're not part of this team. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's how I look at Malka and the Gaberas. They're here to help you. You fail the test, but you have others that are here to pace you, See, to help you. Man, listen. Hallelujah. See, I because this is what, what I didn't realize. I played organized sports back in the day where your coach could cuss you out every ritual way. You had to do two-a-days in the mid-hot heat of summer. One in the morning and again in the afternoon. To perfect yourselves to be one because we got a common goal to win a championship. But if somebody missed a block, you hear the whistle. Eep! Everybody, get on the line. And we're going to do up downs until I get tired. And he ain't doing no up downs. Why coach don't got to do up downs? Why Malek don't got to do up-downs? Why Mushal ain't out here doing up-downs with us? Especially y'all children that ain't played no organized sports. Really, the world has jacked y'all up. Because y'all, they'll tell you, folks come into that boot camp thinking they already know and they don't know nothing. How you know? What, you, what you're saying is like opening my eyes to a greater level of respect for the Malachim hmm. because Hallelujah. I can speak personally where I've, sh I've been shown grace and mercy. And it's because of the mistakes they know that they made and even from the assistance that I've received was from, hey, I know what it's like to be in your shoes. So I'm gonna tarry with you in hopes that you bring forth the same fruit that I was able to bring forth. So I, what he's saying is strong, y'all. And for the, for the Chief Melikim to run seven assemblies and to invest in it, even at Pesach, you see all the impartations they did. That, um, nothing to be taken lightly, hallelujah. Because it shows that I see that you have the ability to do not only what I did, but do it at a greater impact. Did y'all know that Yahushua cho chose those Malachim based on them having a greater impact? 
Hold up. I don't think y'all understand. Greater work shall ye do. How can the servant be greater than his master? Go ahead, Moray. Mike. And then I'll get you. Hallelujah. Man, as you was talking, has anybody seen the movie Coach Carter? Man, this is Coach Carter. Like, you got to think about it. They're in one of the worst neighborhoods in America. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about the children uh, getting good grades, graduating. All they care is about their son or their daughter being able to play basketball. All they care is about is their son or their daughter being able to play basketball. But watch this. You have a coach that has a proven record that has made it out of the hood, played ball, played college, but then his mentor was retiring. So he decides to come back to that school. He, don't, he ain't got to live in that neighborhood. He ain't got to stay there. <clears throat> He's established. He's got his own business. But he came there to train these students. But watch what happens, right? Because it's, we always say this. It's one thing for the leadership to want it for you. But you got to want it better for yourself than we want it for you. But you got to understand that this is a unit. And that one person can add or subtract from the body. So that was a, a kid on the team named uh, Timo Cruz, right? If y'all haven't seen this movie, please, I'm telling you, if you go watch this movie, this message going to come alive to you. Now, it's got a little language in it. I will tell you that. But still, watch, watch the movie uh, if, with your discretion. But when you look at it, there was a kid named Timo Cruz. And like Musha was saying at the beginning, we come here because he has saved our life. Chief, they pour so much and do so much and so serious about it because Yahushua has saved their life. That's why they're so adamant. That's why they stay with it. That's why they're so disciplined. It's because of what Yahushua has done. So now you have this kid named Timo Cruz. He gets the opportunity to be on the team. He thinks he's bigger than the team. He thinks it's all about him, what he can do, what he can offer. Pretty good shooter. The team starts winning without him. He's talking trash like, ah, I, yeah, I could have been, I could have did that, I could have did that. But then something in you starts to desire more, because life is showing you something. All around him, people are dying. All around him, people are dying, right? He's dealing drugs. His cousin gets killed. He winds up at the coach's house crying, desperate. A lot of us came here because we was desperate. But we just had a surface. We may have had a surface level of desperation when we came here. Because we didn't know the requirements. We didn't have an enlightened mind of what the end looks like. So we at Coach House crying. We, we desperate. Because what we doing out here ain't working out. And I'm seeing that this here is going somewhere. So now what happens is, Coach said, okay, Timo. I, I, I got a heart for you. I got, I got passion compassion. I'm going to have mercy upon you. I'm going to bring you in. But you're going to have to do X amount of push-ups and run X amount of suicides. He gives him a task. And watch, watch this. He gives him a task that is unattainable. Everybody knows he ain't going to be able to do this. But watch what it does. He could have sat there and be like, man, this is too much. I can't do it. This man literally tries to break himself 
to meet the requirement. But watch what happens. He didn't have to ask nobody. He was at the end of the last practice he's supposed to meet. Coach said, you didn't meet it. You got to go. Next thing you know, everybody else is seeing Timo's situation. They see where he came from. They see his drive has changed. And they say, you know what? I'm going to run some of his suicides. I'm going to be that burnt offering for him. I'm going to be that Passover lamb to have to suffer. I'll be the blood on the doorpost. I'll be a doorway for somebody else to make it. Then he begins, they begin to do this as a team. That's why y'all marriages, man, y'all, y'all got to understand. It's bigger than you. It's bigger than your feelings. It's bigger than what you think is right. Because everything in this is going to expose who you think you are. You think you're the smartest. You think you're the strongest. You think... You tough, you think you sturdy, you think you'll never fail. No, sir. This going to show you. You're going to feel like you can't do nothing right. But it's all a part of the process to show you what you're going to do. Are you going to still come after me? Are you going to still deny yourself? Hallelujah. Now watch, watch what happens. Because everything is about doing things. Genera- we always, man, go watch this movie. Good. Go watch this movie. Everything is is. No, no, sir. Hold on, wait a minute. Hallelujah. Find the TV editor. Yeah. <laughs> but because what happens is now these students come in, they commit. Everybody commits as a whole to the process. They commit to everything the coach is saying now. Now watch, when he say die, all we hearing is dying. We got to keep dying. We got to keep dying ourselves. Watch what coach did to him all that practice. All that practice, he run the stew out of them. They running. They running. They can't. They ain't doing nothing but running. So they get to the game. They're like, coach, we never went over no plays for offense. What we going to do? He said, you run. You run. You go outwork the opposition. Go outwork the opposition. So all you got to do is run. And then you watch the testimonies. At the end of the movie, it shows all the testimonies of these players when they committed to excellence. So every military person in here, because I noticed this every boot camp video I watch, that there's an integral part during that training process that breaks the unit that tears start to get shed. Somebody ready to get tired. Some of them even at the point that they want to go home. So somebody from the military, tell me what happens when you run into that brother that gets to that critical part of training and he's ready to give up and go home. What do you do? Typically they start talking to him like you can't, we we are not going to let you quit. Oh, 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 oh. What did you say? We are not going to let you quit. He didn't say I ain't going to let you quit. He said what? We can't, won't. <laughs> it's non-negotiable. You hear you came this far we're going to make it through this together. Hallelujah. That's that part where Gabira Tashuba said at the PT test, where somebody trying to go over that, that log and climb that wall, and somebody say, come on, come on, come on. We're going to get there together. That's what DP talking about. So a marriage check-in is him saying, come on, come on. We're going to do this together. You ain't going to give up. I ain't going to give up. We ain't going to give up. We're going to die trying. 
Because I remember doing those wind sprints in them tour days. And they said, nah, 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 don't give up, man. I don't care if you got a jog. Don't you stop. Because it got to a point where people start. But the key thing that the coach loved was you didn't quit. Because the worst thing the military hates more than anything is somebody that quits. A Benedict Arnold. One who goes AWOL on their unit. It got so bad, Mushal, that some wanted to commit suicide because they missed their boyfriend. Yeah. It was too much for him. But um, going to the marriage, the benefits that you get when you're married, I don't know if we realize the benefits that we get being married in the covenant. The military, you get all these benefits, but as soon as you're dependent or somebody in your family do something wrong, you get in trouble too. And that what happened here? When one spouse get in trouble, the whole house. So that's why you got to work together as a team. Husbands and wives lift each other up. Husbands and wives communicate because y'all are buddies, right? You got to communicate to your buddy. Because if I'm in trouble over here, I need you. Yes. I need you. I need you to watch me. I can't wear uh, Harosa Zakane's rank. And we had a lot of wives that wanted to do that. They act like they was the, the captain or, the, or the, the major or whoever. And they was the wife. I can't wear his I can support him the best way I can. I got to do my job as a Kabir. I got to do my job as a mother. I got to do my job as a wife and support him in any way I can. Some of the benefits that he gets, yeah, I may get that. But that's why a husband and wife got to work together so y'all can make it together. If one of y'all crossed the finish line, the other one's back there, something wrong. That picture don't look right. It don't look right. Said that the training and the counseling that was given to you was non effective. So, see, that's what military training does. Because eventually, because the whole time y'all sleeping in the same bunk, showering in the same stall. But eventually, you're going to leave the same and be in different rooms. But you still got to maintain the same thought process. It's almost like you communicate with each other telepathically. That's how tight y'all are as a unit. Some people probably been retired 20 years and that they can still give a same command and every military person will know exactly what they said and exactly what they mean. And they ain't been to boot camp in 20 and 30 years. Why? Somebody give you me out with my. Go ahead and read the next verse. James 512. Go ahead and let them read and then you can. But above, but above all things, my brethren, swear not falsely, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea, and your nay, nay, lest ye fall into condemnation. Yaakov 512. So really, they trying to tell you, when they say you can't quit, we can't allow you to quit, they're telling you in code, you got to keep your oath, man. We in this together. You can't quit. Integrity check. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, just want to uh, land back on what 
Gabir was saying in regards to the marriage. I think a lot of times uh, cinema and um, media, cartoons and stuff, they kind of spoil the idea or the perception we have of certain things. But you had me looking at Lion Prize recently, um, just studying and watching videos. I'm like, I got to shift my entertainment to something that's conducive. And when you look at a Lion Pride, um, they whole existence and life of being is, is a kill and eating. One, they, the, the lion is the king of the jungle, and it can eat any animal, but it risks its life every time they go out to eat. A giraffe can kick it one time, and it's dead. A hippopotamus can bite it one time, it's dead. An elephant can stump it one time, it's dead. So it's not like these animals are laying down. But when you look at the strategy of how they hunt, it's a system. And when the women go forth, the lioness go forth, and they set up a, a entrapment of the animal, they put a barricade around the animal, and then the male lion comes in and suffocates the lion, I mean the animal, until it dies. And I'm saying that to tie back into the husband and the wife because me, myself, I was a person, like a lot of my struggles, I had pride in the sense I wouldn't share with my wife because I didn't know her function and what Yahuwah gave her to me for in my marriage and how to overcome certain things. And so I'm battling a lot of things on my own versus allowing the lioness in my wife, encouraging the lioness in her to help me fight these things and that we attack these ruots and these things together. And that's the thing that we see even, like Malek always say with Malka, he was like, she got my heart in prayer. So just like today, he wasn't here, but his spirit was here in the sense of how we got to that place in Ruach and going forth because the lioness knew what the lion wanted and it came forth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because that thing with what you said about that lion hunting, he realizes that his life hangs on completing that mission. Because he, he prophetically spoke to you about the lion. Because we told the lion, king of the jungle. Prophetically. Because they are. Because there's nothing like them when they, as a pride, when they kill, ain't nothing like them. But they don't tell you about the droughts. So they literally got to say, I either kill this animal and feed the rest of the pride or die and starve trying to kill it. And guess what? It's the female that's willing to put her life on the line. So it's not saying weaker vessel to degrade you. It's saying that there's something special about that vessel. It's nothing more dangerous than a woman that's ready to die. Think about it. Because she has the ability to carry the seed of the covenant. Let it m metaphor transform and grow and extend to come from a seed to a baby and then get on an operating table that's why a man gotta love his isha because she knows what it is to walk in the bridge of life and death. Do you know that every time a woman gives birth that she's putting her life on the line? She's between life and death because it's at a crucial point that if anything goes wrong or inherently the wrong way, she can die and the baby too.
but you don't want to work and provide for her. You don't want to take care of her. You don't want to protect her. You don't want to guard her with purpose. Not only to do it one time, she do it two, three, four, five, six, seven times for you. Because they tell you there's no pain like the pain of giving birth. Because that pain is, I could die right here on the table. Or one of us can live and the other one die. That's why they're telling you during that process that they're trying to keep your wife calm. Give her serenity. Don't bring stress to the baby. Because that's the seed. She bears the seed. The fruit of her womb. So that's why, young men, you don't have rights to her unless you married to her. Because you don't know what you stirring up. Go ahead and read it. Michelle. Um, yeah, dealing with uh, single moms and, and stuff like that. Uh, and having a big family. You know, the woman... It's giving birth. And if it is between her and that child, I've heard so many times, take the baby. Take the baby. Take the baby. She just sacrificed her life for that seed. So many times. Just take the baby. Take the baby. So he can live. Take the baby. That's why we tell y'all to get over yourself. Hallelujah. 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 You're preaching the baby. You're cutting off the oxygen of the baby because you can't get over your feelings. I don't like the way you talk to me. You didn't have to say it that hard. Ask a soldier that. Ask any one of these people in this room that I salute with all respect that serve a country that didn't love them back. But then you were willing to die again to come back and die for this purpose. So cool by you can. Reenlisting themselves to endure pain again, to suffer again for a greater purpose than themselves. You hear me? Go ahead. So for the uh, holy seed, to preserve the holy seed, it got to be two deaths, going back to what you said earlier. The death of that man, so he can serve that wife, so she can lay down her life on all fours and bear that seed properly. It got to be two deaths. Right. Because when they both trying to live, that baby can't live. So it's your job to make the admin. Why do you think Chief talk about covenant man? You think it's only so you can live in your house? Eventually, somebody got to have a baby. So you can't make the temperature change based off your feelings because there's a baby. What are you talking about? My kid's grown. It's a baby in your kids. 
and there's another baby in them kids. And then there's another generation in them kids. And then we got another generation waiting on them kids. Do y'all get the drift now? So die in Yahusha now while the time is right. Because I want you to have the first death, the one that comes with Kabul to Yahuwah. But don't mess around and get the second death that you can't return again. Go ahead. I just wanted to share what I feel like Yahuwah was showing me. You know. So just the process that we go through giving birth, I don't know if, if anybody's experienced miscarriage, but if you have, that's the first um, realization you get that giving birth is risky and you're not in control. And so, having a baby and being pregnant, you know, it's a whole walk of Imunah, the whole walk, up until the day you give birth. And I know the mothers here have experienced, especially giving natural birth or any, any situation because complica complications can happen. You don't know what may happen. You don't know. You have to mentally come to grips that the worst could happen. You have to prepare your mind that I, I'm trusting Yahuwah, but I don't know what the end of this is going to look like. So, And so just knowing, just listening to what you're saying and Yahuwah just showing me, like, that's the, the mental death you got to be willing to, to do every day. Soldier. <laughs> and just you know, and then you realize, even experiencing loss, you realize that uh, I need Yahuwah in this. Soldier. <laughs> I can't do it by myself. Oh, my soldier, soldier. <laughs> soldier bringing forth. It's not enough for you to just want it. You go by ya. <laughs> and then after you give birth, it's sacrifice. Whoa. Sacrifice on top of sacrifice. All breath, all breath. Crush it. <laughs> then the second press. And then you do it again. <laughs> and you risk it again. Because the final press, the third press, is where every bit of dirt, every bit of Contain uh, stuff that's burnt, that's ready to be burnt off you. It's the three stages of the press. Boot camp is three stages that you're going to get pressed. Because one thing I noticed at the end of that video, when they gave them their eagle and their globe and their anchor, tears begin to roll down their eyes. I'm sitting there looking like they dying for this. This little thing that they obtain means so much to them. Yes. Yes. But Yahuwah is offering eternal glory and stripes, and we do little or nothing to pay attention to it. Crying. Eyes welled up. Because to them, it was worth all of it. Some of them said, I'll do it again. They said, I'll do it all over again. 
it was worth it. Go ahead and read that verse. For men truly by the greater and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. Wherein Elua willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed, confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for Elua to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enters into that where within the veil, whither the, whither the forerunner is for us entered, even Yahushua, made a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Did y'all hear that key word, anchor? Anchors away. When the sea pulls into the port, it's, what is it, Godot? Anchors away. He's the Yahuwah of armies, Yahuwah Sabaoth. Military was created by him, for him. Because as I looked at that, I, I was telling Yahoo, you know what's going to be worth it for me? I said, I want Yahuwah to allow me to escort us and these children to the land. You want to see well works? You want to see where it's all worth it in the end? To do what my father did in his land before me. My father Abraham looked. And he said look Abraham as far as the eyes can see. Forever your feet touch that shall be yours and your descendants after you. To be able to walk in that land that my father Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. That we stepped on. And look over it. I don't have to live long after that. I could just die right there. Why? Because everything, I can look at my children, if it be my grandchildren, I can look at them and say, every moed, it was worth it. Hallelujah. Every ant that bit us in Houston, it was worth it. Hallelujah. Every brick that hit my heels in Dallas, it was worth it. Hallelujah. To stand there for hours, to wait to walk in that gallon, it was worth it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To behold the place, not even looking him in the face yet, but to behold the place that he promised that let me step there. That's all you got to show me. Blessed is he who has not seen but yet still believe. You hear me? Go to the next slide. Mm. This slide, I, I ain't go all into it, but this is about Dawid. Who was a better soldier than Dawid? He went to boot camp, tending sheep. We got some Dawids, part of the RPS team. You Dawid, you got to protect the sheep. But you're going to encounter sometimes, you're going to encounter losses. Gangs, but you cannot change. You can't change your direction. You got to keep on farming. Because you got to trust the one that sent you.
So Dawid got to the point, even as a shepherd boy, he had to fight a bear. He had to fight a lion. Why? Why, what, what was that building up? His wealth, his kingdom. Whose kingdom? His. Khan. But he, even though it was his, he still gave it to Yahuwah. Remember, the word said he was a man after Yahuwah's own heart. So it got to a breaking point where he had to face a giant that no one was willing to face. But guess what? The willingness to do it meant that his life was on the line. So in order for him to challenge him, he had to be prepared for the very death that he was willing to inflict. He had to be willing to take one for it. Come on now. First, they tried to give him armor. It's too big. It didn't fit him. He was a boy. He said, I don't need these things. Why? Because I've already fought a lion. I know what combat is. I fought a lion. I fought a bear. I know what combat is. But this giant means that this means something else. What am I saying? Because the king himself wasn't willing to face this giant. Do y'all hear me? Military mind. So he knew that even if he didn't slay the giant, he would die for the sake of a kingdom that he believed would take care of him whether he be here or gone. Guess what? That means seed is on the line because he hadn't had no child yet. Legacy is on the line. So what drove him? Were we not a culture of people that believed in lineage and seed to cover you? So what drove him? Because he had complete trust in the one that sent him. And that act of obedience allowed him to slay a giant before the people that made him worthy of being a king. Hear me. Because he was anointed king while there was a king still sitting on the throne. Hear me. Not only did he do it for Yahuwah, but he gave credence and credit and honor to the king that still sat on the throne. Could you do that? Because you ain't died yet. In order for you to face a life or death situation head on, part of you have already died. That nothing else mattered. When Yahushua was at the Garden of Yosemite, he reached a breaking point. How many know what Gethsemane means? Oil press. See how I'm sweating profusely right now? He got to the point where he sweated blood. And while he was praying, before it got to that point, his prayer was, Yahuwah, he said, if this cup can be removed. But nevertheless, not my will, 
We talking about the Malek Cabo now. We talking about a king because David was a king. David was so. <laughs> Yahuwah honored David so much that he said, I'm going to come to earth as the seed of the, as a son. That's what's wrong with some of you men. You ain't know what it is to be a son yet. How can you teach when you have not son yet? Women that don't know how to be daughters trying to govern other children. The Torah was a sign that you have come to die. Because everything in Egypt was wrong for you. It was so defiled, I couldn't even let you stay there. You couldn't, it was so defiled that I wouldn't even let you pay tribute to me there. So I got to bring you out here to die. So he brought some of y'all to Augusta to die. Some of y'all went to Columbia so you could die. Anderson so you could die. Some went to Dallas so you could die. Some went to Houston. Are you ready? Some went to Austin. Ready? Some went as far as OKC, and you don't know that you're supposed to go there to die. You still want to be an individual. You want to serve Yahuwah the way you think it looks like it ought to be, rather than the way he said it's supposed to be. One mistake, because it didn't stop Adonai coming as the son of Dawi. But one mistake for Dawi, he could not build the temple. One mistake, a baby, a seed died. And Yahuwah said, I would have gave you as many as you wanted if you only asked. But here, here's where David was different. This is why he was a man after Yahuwah's heart. When the sentence came, he didn't go and say, I ain't going back to that assembly no more. He ain't stopped coming to Thursday night prayer. Come on. He ain't start choosing which Shabbat he was going to show up at. He said, not only did I do it, I take full responsibility. So Yahuwah said, I do, I chose the right one. Look, look at how dead he was to his own salvation. So Yahuwah says, you can't build it, but this is what I'll do because I love you. I'll let Solomon build the temple. But see, here's what David did. He celebrated like he was saying it was him building the temple. So could some of us celebrate going to the land even if you don't get there? What your friends going to mean to you then? Is it going to be worth it? If you can't be Moray, is it worth it to you?
Go to the next slide. Because I'm going somewhere. Daniel 3. This is about the three Hebrew boys. Did they serve in the military? Did they serve in the military? How did they serve? So they had the mind of who? Their father. They didn't go to boot camp, but they had the mind of the king in their hearts. That when they told them, when you hear this music play, When you see this statue, you have to pay tribute and bow down and worship the image. But here's how slick they were. They didn't disrespect President Biden and say, who he think he is? They, mm -mm. they said, no, no, who you think you is? No, they said, oh, great king. <laughs> We're trying to give you a secret now. Oh, great king, there is no one in the earth like you. They gave credence. What? We'll do anything you want us to do, but for this right here, we cannot defile the king that serves in a greater capacity. So guess what they did? They put their life. They died right there. They said to the point, even if he don't deliver us. No matter how tall your guards may be. No matter how high your throne may sit in Babylon. We'll do whatever. We'll, we'll serve you. We'll interpret dreams for you. We'll even initiate ways for you to keep your rulership intact. But for this right here. We'll pronounce ourselves dead before we bow down to this text. They said Nebuchadnezzar got so mad got so disrespected that he put the fire at seven times hotter. Why? Because he was willing to prove a point, which some of us try to do sometimes. Didn't one of their kinfolk interpret a dream for him before this happened? Did he not see the power of Yahuwah? But he got so mad in his ego, he said, turn it up seven times hotter. The fire was so hot that even the ones that were kindling the fire got killed kindling the fire. What would be your response when you see that? Everybody, everybody here said consuming fire. Didn't they say it? Everybody, I, I heard you yell it. Consuming fire. So when you saw the consuming fire, will you walk in it? Be careful. Because we just read together where it said an oath to Yahuwah, a man got to keep it. So whether they went to boot camp or not, that showed that they had the mind of a soldier. Because Akoti didn't go to boot camp. But did you hear how she broke down the, 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 uh, the performance of having birth and having to be a soldier ready to sacrifice for something greater than herself? Who's willing to be greater? 
Who's willing to exalt a kingdom that's greater than themselves? Who's willing to die to their own opinion and thoughts and processes? Who's willing to submit themselves to the report of the king that he set before your face? Because get this clue. Even though he wasn't the king of Israel, they knew that Yahuwah had appointed him. So y'all can talk all the trash y'all want. But if y'all go to the White House, I don't care how Hebrew you get, you're going to follow them instructions or you will not get entry into that place. You ain't going to come in there and say, Joe, we got a few bones to pick with you. You're going to say, good evening, Mr. President. Y'all talk junk about Camilla Harris. But when you see her, you're going to say, good evening, Madam Vice President. You ain't that super of a brew. Because I can show you three that's better than you. Die. Die to your ways. Because you've already, you, once you walk through this door, you cannot commit to nothing that you knew before. If you come under that dialect, nothing you knew before you come under that dialect matters anymore. But I'm going to take it further. That dialect better go with you to your address. Because just because I didn't cuss Joe out, I went with the dialect and the sword to his address. Oh, oh my. Yeah. Y'all get what I'm saying? It don't matter who you used to be back in the day. Because I used to be a lot of things back in the day. Maya, shall I tell you? I got a record. Ask some of my Facebook friends that don't have Israel beside their name. But it don't matter here. You heard, Chief? Mushal, you can't take them out to the pasture. Because that's the old thought process. Because you got someone that's going to fight for you. You don't got to fight that no more. Just bring yourself as one with us. We'll show you better than we can tell you. Because I watch them humbly take criticism after criticism. You think nobody ain't talked about the Chiefs? You think ain't nobody hurt they feelings? Go ahead. I just want to add while you were speaking, Mushal, what my mind was going back to is in the military you can have recruits that'll go through all that training, they'll go through getting all that discipline instilled in them. They'll go to their technical school and they'll learn whatever their job is. And they'll go to their first duty station and they'll forget the oath. They'll forget everything that they said they would be responsible for. They will forget the discipline and they will return back to them old, their old selves. So they would be fighting in the club. They would be cussing people out. They would not be showing up for work on time. They'd be late for PT because they returned to them their old selves. They forgot what was instilled in them in boot camp and they tried to be individual again they tried to be themselves again, and they ended up being discarded. 
then when I say this, that makes them treason. You a spy. That's Matthew 7. He said, many will come to me in that day and say, Adonai, Adonai, haven't I cast out Ruachs in your name? Haven't I, key word, I. Treason. Because you took what I gave you and you made it non-effective. You wicked, evil servant. You took my talent. You didn't even have the courage to take what I said to see if you could try to multiply it. But you took my talent. You knew when you took it, it wasn't yours. You knew that you didn't produce it of yourself. But you're going to take it and bury it for yourself. Who do you think you are? Oh, y'all didn't know. Yahusha comes to collect for what he is. That's what stretching season is. I come to collect what's in you. I'm pressing you all the way down. I'm going to crush you. Because I'm going to get what's mine out of you. Because you my soldier. I gave up Egypt for you. I gave up the world for you. I even left a throne in the Shamaim and walked out here for you. Then went back to the throne and then I ascended to in the earth and walked as them to you again. How many times do I got to tell you to die? Yeah, I knew this mess was going to get some type of Second Timothy chapter 2. Go ahead and read that, Godon. And I want everybody to listen. Listen. Don't even think about your baby. Listen to what's being said right here, right now. This is the order. Second, Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. You, therefore, my son, be strong. And the grace that, that is in Mashiach Yahushua. And the things that you have heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit you to faithful men. Any Mushals are there? Seven. Seven. Well, it's five Mushals. But there are two Malek chiefs. How many messages? They got messages. The Mushals got messages. There were messages even before they were ones that even left the fold. There are messages that have been gone. Many, many witnesses that came before you. Just like when you walk off that bus on boot camp. Many witnesses, many soldiers came before you. Many soldiers took what we gave them and they gave their very, they gave the ultimate sacrifice of dying for you to have this chance to raise this flag in front of you. Go ahead, Kano. And the things that you have heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit you to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. Therefore, endure hardness. Are they faithful? Khan. Are the chief malaks faithful? Khan, Khan. Y'all think I'm just bigging up the chiefs. Because they told you the kingdom of eternal excellency. So I'm exalting them because they exalt the kingdom of eternal excellency. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
So if you stuck on the point that they put on their clothes and their pants one leg at a time like you, then you've missed the point. If you think even I, sitting before your face, ain't worthy, then you're missing the point. Telling you what it is. Go ahead, good dog. Verse 3. Therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahusha Hamashiach. Take the correction. Take the counseling. It may not feel right. It don't always feel good. But take the correction. Take accountability to the correction. I promise you, it's better for you than you think it is. It's just like medicine. Don't always taste good, but it's too for you. I'll one up you. I have a motto that if you have a certain relationship with me, whether I like what you said or not, you have obtained a point where you're worthy of me considering the word that came out your mouth. think we always agree it's not always an initial agreement but then when you consider you know what you might be right about that and it's like as soon as you accept that correction as soon as you accept that understanding it seems like it opens up a whole new portal for you so when you go through that boot camp, when you complete it, it opens a whole new world for you. You got access to be stationed not only in America, you can be stationed overseas. If you always wanted to go to Hawaii, they got a base in Hawaii. If you always wanted to go to Asia, they got bases in Asia. Even if you wanted to go to Africa, there's a base for you. So what do you think the Chiefs got here? And you only seeing the small portion. This is only the beginning. You think Musha, Chief Malek, knew when him and his wife were young, married couple, serving in his father's church, that he might have an assembly that's in Oklahoma City? Here's what y'all don't know. It was a time where the territory could have extended even up to Seattle, Washington. But y'all think y'all know everything. Why would you who would give them something from one coast to another? They ain't serving no military. How do they get access? They even got centurion soldiers amongst them that say, Chief, you don't got to come to Houston. Just give us the word and we believe what you say and we'll carry that thing out. But you right here in Augusta. And your feelings got hurt. Yeah, I'm walking on you. I don't care. You only hear an hour down the road in Columbia, yet it bothers you when Mushal tell you something. But I got people in other states that just say, Mushal, people texting me from different states. Mushal, why don't you just make, uh, why don't you do a page? Why don't you teach online? But I can't because I made an oath. Because somebody, yeah, my God. 
It say, sometimes you got to have great strength to hold up great strength. Anybody here know if you play sports or even as a soldier, the best soldier, the best athlete is usually the one that's holding up the weakest athlete. Because they've already died to themselves. One of the ways you who broke me, and I'll never forget it, and I'll tell it a thousand times in that discipleship training school. He said, in order for you to know what effective leadership is, you better know what it is to effectively follow somebody. What you mean? I'm there to get ready so I get ready to go to minister training. I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to go so I can get my, you know, my... Um, seminary degree so I go somewhere and preach and be a pastor somewhere no 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 he stopped me in the middle of a cartoon I even tried to go back I tried to fit in and he said mm -mm. remember that cartoon I stopped that you died there now finish dying even to the point in front of my wife you ain't died yet. Finish dying and I'll show you where I'm taking you. What's wrong with your marriage? You ain't finished dying yet. What's wrong with you and your relationship with your aunt and a coachy? You ain't finished dying yet. Because you got a thousand generations waiting on you. Why can something that petty stop a thousand generations from coming out your lawn? Where we at? The inconvenience of time. You want to come, you want to come in Shabbat when you want to, not when the time that's posted. See, y'all messed up with me. I went to an HBCU. You know what our motto was there? To be on time is to be late, and to be late is to be on time. I mean, to be early is to be on time. You told me to be here at 12. I'm here at 12. You late. Why? Because that means you didn't have a desire to be here. Anybody that got a desire to be somewhere, they always early to that party. In boot camp, those that failed those courses, the ones that they wanted to practice, the ones that really wanted it, they showed up before everybody else got there. But yet you'll read Psalms. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. But I came in 30, 45 minutes late. Were you? Because guess what? The military, they'll give you a weekend pass. But come old doc 30 Monday morning. You not only better be on base, but you better be in formation, and you better be fit for inspection. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So when y'all come through the door, and you see them snipers, them intercessors, they inspecting you. Even before you get to that pot where they praying you at, they filling you out, because if it's something wrong, they're going to send you out of here. You ain't fit. Why you think there's an outer court and an inner court? Keep reading. Keep reading. Verse 4. No man that wars entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. So and my job ain't paying enough don't mean anything to us. I don't care about your job. 
Why? Because we in the holies of holies. The fullness and the completeness of everything you think life is about that's above it is resting here. So we don't care nothing about your job, your car. Just like the military say, we don't care nothing about your mama and daddy. You came here, this is, hey, this is our job. This is what we do. And if you don't like it, there's a door for you to go another direction. No one's stopping you. You tired? You hot? Go find another place. But it's like they used to say, one monkey don't stop no show. Verse 5. And if a man also strive for mastery, yet is not, yet he is not crown except he strive lawfully the husbandman that labors must be first partaker of the fruits consider what I say and Yahweh will give you understanding in all things remember that Yahusha Hamashia of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my besora wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer even unto bonds but the word of Elua is not bound therefore I endure therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Mashiach Yahushua. Not an individual anymore. That word came and showed me that it ain't about me, it ain't about I, it's about Adonai Yahushua. Because this is his body. I might be the toe. You might be the index finger. Somebody else might be the chest. But there's always one head. But they all serve as one body. Go ahead, Shemshan, there you finish. Um, I was just going to say about verse 4, um, not being entangled entangling ourselves with the affairs of our own life. Um, this past Monday, man, before Monday, I had then hit a stride. I'm, I'm sacrificing for you who with my eating habits, uh, working out, you know, I'm just doing things too. And Monday, man, my heart hit 213 beats a minute. That's 3.5 beats a second. And I got rushed to the hospital. And then Thursday come, and it ain't about that. It ain't about me. It ain't about what my heart did earlier because I'm dead in Yahusha. And I got to give him glory. I got to give him kabod. I got to give all that I can on this day. So ain't no way I can come entangled with the things of my own life when my life don't belong to me no more. When I'm only here because of his grace. Soldier. When I'm only here because of his mercy. Soldier. Because he decided to grant me another day where I can present myself to him. Where he can receive of me. How dare I be entangled with something I'm supposed to have been and gave up. It say nothing can pluck us out of his hands. How dare I come in here and pluck my life away from his hands and have something to stand on like his mind? So you just said the ultimate thing why a soldier is willing to give up their life. They have so much confidence that I got what in me that's worth so much more that I could die. Because you know what else a Marine says? They don't die. They go to Sheol and reload. So if them being who they say they are, what kind of soldier should you be? Because when Yirmiyahu who started talking to me about that Navy SEAL, talking about he'll die on that treadmill before he let me beat him, I said I got a greater goal than he got. 
Because I believe that if I keep running, I won't pass out or die. I'm going to run into a, a portal that's taking me somewhere else. As Philip. They missed that. As Philip. To the point that he was just taken away. Where did he go? With the Ethiopian Taliban. Where did he go? He immersed them and was gone. So if I have this faith in this man that was gone, ain't no Navy SEAL going to beat me to nothing. Because I'm going to outpace him. Because here is the patience of the saints. Who have the testimony of Hamashiach. Who kept his commandments. That's, that, what, what, what can a Navy SEAL do against that? <laughs> I'm seated in heavenly places. What can a Navy SEAL? A born breaded machine of the United States of America. What can he do against that? Read. Verse 11. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we be dead with him, we shall. Dead. The first death. Because the second death will have no sting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He read it, soldier. We shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, we also he also will deny us. If we believe not. Yet he abides faithful. He cannot deny himself. Wow. All these things put them on in remembrance. Charging them. Put on your head wrap. Put on your deep deep. Put on your outfit. In remembrance of him. Put on your stock. Take this correction. Do this in remembrance of me. Take this oil. Every time they put that oil on you. Do this in remembrance of me. Go ahead, read. 13, if we believe not, yet he abides faithful, he cannot dis deny himself. 14, of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before Yahuwah, that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Study to show thyself approved unto Allah, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightfully dividing the word of truth, but shun profane and vain babblings for they will increase into more wickedness. And your words will eat as does a canker, 
of whom is Hymenius and Beltius. But right there. This is why we don't debate. Because you should have a sure word of prophecy in you. Mashiach already spoke for you. He said, those whom you have given me are in my hands and they will not be taken out. So it can be no division amongst us. So I'm charging husbands and wives. There can be no division amongst you or you got to go. Because you're not in the order. It ain't going to be what you said. It's going to be what you do. What you gonna do with this? The preparation for the military ain't about what nobody can tell you. It's what they grade you based on what you can do. They don't grade you on what you know. Because what you say has to transpire in what you do. Go ahead. 17, well, 18. Who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of Alua stands sure, having the seal. Yahuwah knows them that are his. And let, and let everyone that names the name of Mashiach depart from iniquity. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for Adonai's use, and prepared unto every through work. Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, love, peace with them that call on all, on all Yahuwah, out of a pure heart, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing that they do gender strifes. And the servant of Yahuwah must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If Alua perchance will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the, of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. So we can't have no pettiness amongst us. A soldier can't be petty. Because the, if they make a mistake, the whole platoon dies. The whole regiment is in danger if one does not take his part seriously. What does that mean? Just because I'm not the captain don't mean me as the petty officer don't have to take my job seriously. Hallelujah. Because the reality is I'm trusting the orders of the captain because I don't know the files. I don't know the strategy that comes from the commanding general that gets on his office. So I don't have no right to say what he don't know. But somebody has made them fit to tell me what I need to do. So I got to do what I can to the best of my ability. You know what's worse for a team is for a team to lose because they did not put in effort. Yes, it hurts to lose the game, 
But if you lose it by 75, 63 to nothing, that's a sign that there was no effort. You didn't practice with a purpose. But if we lost by one, we left everything on the field. And we got a measuring stick that says, this is what we need to do to accomplish the next game. This is where, this is where we're at. This is where we need to go to win, to obtain the ultimate prize. So in order to get where everybody in this room want to go, you're going to have to die to get that ultimate prize. Do you hear me? You tired, yeah. You ain't, but you ain't dead yet. You hot, you, you uncomfortable, but you ain't dead yet. I don't want nobody to go out on the field that ain't ready to give their all with me. I don't want you with me. Yahuwah even asked that. When you go to the holies of holies, you better have your whole thing in act because I don't want that in there. That's why they gave him a rope. And a bell. Because you come into a place, yet it may be small. It may have a, dimensions may not be as big as the outer court. But this is the, where the power and the source is. Very few make it alive out of here. So like the Marines, I'm looking for a few good men and women. Who don't mind serving and giving their all? Who don't mind reporting for duty? That don't have an issue with authority. Who is that, Gideon? Only a few men. There's too many out here. Look at the ones that drink the water a certain way. You keep them. Tell all the other ones, go back home. He didn't kick them out the nation, but they couldn't go where they were going. This is where I'm going to be honest with some of you. Where we're going, some of y'all can't go. May not be out the nation, but you ain't Everybody ain't priesthood material, man. Malcolm, do I have your permission to say that? Everybody's not priesthood material. But you better exhort the name of Yahuwah like your life depend on it, though. So you got to take, when you see that incense burning, you better take that seriously. Because somebody gave something for that. Every time you see Malek stand up in front of you, you better be careful because he gave something for that. What have you given up? Have you left your family weeks at a time to go exhort some people that were going to portray you anyway? We're going to talk fair now. Since you think you're on that level, we're going to talk fair. Have you done that? What have you given up for the sake of this kingdom? 
Be honest with yourself now. Because just like that military, they didn't tell you you can't talk to your mama and daddy no more. But understand that where you're entering, they can't go. They have to have what you got. They got to be willing to go through what you went through to come through this door. Unless we get credence from the high-ranking officials and officers in charge. One of my favorite rappers, Biggie Smalls. He had an album called Ready to Die, and I believed him. I believed them rappers, man, at one time. Till I read that article that said he died of the anxiety of dying. The anxiety of getting shot killed him. You know what that means? Not only was he not ready to die, but he wasn't even fit to be the soldier he claimed to be. Singing songs like, in words bleed just like us. Picture me being scared of a, that breathes the same air as me. He didn't believe not one word of that song he said. But he convinced thousands of people, such as myself, to walk with that attitude. And Yahuwah said, die. Find another hero. Diehard Lakers fan. They called him the Black Mamba. Out of nowhere, gets in a helicopter with him and his daughter. Find another hero. Who your inspiration now? I'm going to strip you till you get to nothing. Till there's nothing left but me. So you're all going to strip us. Until there's nothing left but him. You heard what he said. Some gold, some silver, some bronze, some wood, some stubble. Either way, you're going to get burned. And it's not going to come in a way that you think it is. It ain't your job that he burning you with. It ain't. Nope, 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 nope. It's your least suspected thing. It's going to be the very one that's closer to you than anybody else. I'm going to burn you up. And you till you say, I yield, 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 I yield to your will. I yield to your way. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done on earth as it is in the Shabbat. Who's going to yield today? Who's going to yield today? Taking y'all out y'all comfort zone. Who gonna stand? <laughs> it's a great day coming, but who gonna be able to stand? It's gonna be the separation, the wheat and the tear. Ain't gonna be based on the merit of how much Hebrew language you know. Mm -mm -mm -mm. <laughs> who can endure to the end? Who ain't going to give up at boot camp? Who going to take what I gave them in boot camp and take this talent and multiply it? Or are you going to take what I gave you and hide it?
Because you'll never be discharged if you do it honorably unto Yahushua. See, that's the difference. See, eventually in their army, you have to retire. You have to be honorably or dishonorably discharged. But you never, this, this benefit never dies. Matter of fact, it lasts from here to a thousand generations after you. We read it. This benefit don't get cut off, but there's a requirement. Hey, it ain't free. <laughs> ain't that what they told us in church? Salvation is free. He that is free is free indeed. That's what they told you. <laughs> they didn't tell you you had to die. Because you have to die to serve him in the capacity that he desires. There's a smell that he desires. There's a sound that he desires. There's a posture that he desires. He ain't accepting no other way. Man, that's just my style, Musha. That's just how I talk, you know what I mean? I just I, I do what I do, you know what I mean? That's 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 just who I am, man. Die. I ain't used to having to do that. Die. Man, we used to do this. Die. Because this is the analogy he gave me about a car. A car ain't suited to do nothing but what I desire it to take me. So you got to consider yourself a car to Yahuwah. You ain't built to do nothing. You don't have your specification. Everything he built was for his desire, not yours. And if you get to the point that you're not fit for that, you can't be in my driveway. You can't be in my kingdom. That's what I learned when I died. The loyalty wasn't to my homies. The loyalty was for a kingdom. My strength wasn't to defend my boys when they got in a fight. My strength was to hold up the two chiefs. He took my mess ups, my, my wrongdoings, and turned it into a positive as a bridge that Godot talked about earlier so that you could walk on this ark. See, you ain't got to be a baby daddy. I already conquered that for you. You ain't got to be a fornicator because I've already conquered that for you. You don't have to be a rebellion because I've already did that for you. You ain't got to be a liar because I already told everyone that you could think of for you. You ain't got to be a thief because whatever I thought I could get, I did and I tried it. All this to make a mooshaw in front of your face telling you to keep this covenant. So you ain't missing out on nothing. And there are others, the other witnesses that can tell you what I'm saying and tell you to a greater capacity. There is no excuse is what I'm saying. Do we understand? So what are we ready to do?
What are we ready to do? What are we ready to do? You better keep that oath then. You said it, now do it. Praise Yahuwah for his word.